So I have a collection of um, questions that were submitted at a retreat for teenagers at City Gospel Mission called Impact, Teen Impact, or Impact. Um, this is a uh, collection of these, and they're really good. I've seen a few, and I've answered a few. Um, some of it is extremely deep in theology and, and, and all, and so I'm just going to shuffle them up. I'm not trying to show off, but I, I want you to know I'm trying to not prepare. I, I'm not prepared, as a matter of fact. So I'm just going to shuffle a little bit and then uh, see if I can answer this question. It says, what is meant for all of us to be here? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Was it God's plan? Woohoo! <laughs> so was, were you meant to be here? And why are we here? Is there a purpose? Absolutely. It's a good question. Is this just time and chance and matter being put here by accident? Uh, no. There's design. There's too much design physically. There's too much design about us mentally, emotionally, spiritually. There's just too much evidence that there is a God. And there's too much uh, evidence of purpose and reason for stuff. Just physically thinking about water is, and food and oxygen, there's reasons for all that. How much more uh, for the purpose of a relationship? We are very personal type people. You know, humans are very personal and, and we are very relationship oriented. Um, and if we are among each other, you know, with friends or family and all that, that's an indication, I think, on what our maker is like. So there's several good reasons biblically and philosophically. There's a lot of reasons why we could say, why did he create us? And what's the purpose? And why are we here? And so I would like to suggest one, and there's many. Um, the main reason I believe, drum roll here, uh, that we were created and that God had a plan for us is for him to have sons and daughters. The biggest and greatest revelation to me, and I think scripturally, especially if you look at the life of Jesus, quick survey as he kept talking about father, father, father. And if you look at things like there's a passage of Malachi that talks about they becoming one flesh so that he could have offspring, godly offspring, that God could have godly offspring. Uh, Adam was called the son of God in Luke chapter three. And, um, and uh, you know, he, if you look through the letters of Paul and through uh, various things that Jesus said, um, it absolutely points to the fact that God wants sons and daughters. He had one initially, an eternal co-existent, co-God, um, if you will, one God, uh, three persons. That's another question. Maybe, well, maybe you'll be in the stack. Um, that. But he wanted more. And it's not like he was needing anything. The Bible says in Acts 17, as if he needed anything. You know, he doesn't need anything. There's nothing inside of God that should be out of him. There's nothing outside of God that should be in him. So why did he create? Was he lonely? Absolutely not. Um, he doesn't need anything. I just said that. Um, so why did he do it? Love. He already had a love relationship between his fa the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, but he love just wants to do give a lot generous you know if you're loving people you just want to give and give and and we are not even limited in the sense that we only have love for one object you know one person or something we have a sense of wanting to love more than one how much more god and this is infinite love god is infinite in every way and all his attributes so he wanted to create a race of beings to become sons and daughters of god not equal with him will never be equal in the highest sense of infinite and eternal and such but we will have the qualities of character in the very nature of god has put it into us now and and that we actually behold the bible says in, in romans 8 talks about the manifestation of the sons of god it's gonna be a time where our bodies are swallowed up from mortality to immortality we'll have like god's son's glorified body like jesus had uh, and so it's very cool. We are going to be children of God. If you give your life to Jesus, if you commit your soul and your heart to him, you can be born again. Jesus said you must be born again, John 3, 7. And you need to have a rebirth so that you become a child of the Father. So I would encourage you to seek him. And that's a really good question. And if you want to ask some more questions, feel free to submit some questions. I'll try and tackle it in the, uh, in the comments section. All right, God bless you.